Hi, Dimitri Downing here again, back at MJ Unpacked with another episode of the Canterbury Tales, the stories of the great emerging brands from the Arizona and soon to be, excuse me, American and soon to be global cannabis industry. I don't know why I said Arizona there. But we're here with my co-hosts for today. Rita Valenzuela. And Destiny Blanco. And we are pleased to be joined by two individuals representing one of the coolest brands in the American cannabis industry. One of the most well-known brands in the American the cannabis industry. The number one industry. edible company in North America. It, yeah. It's just it's just a great honor to be sitting here with you guys. <laughs> and yep. actually to be sharing with the community the story of the origins of Juana. And of course, introducing them to yourself. Joe and Mike, how are you guys doing? Awesome. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Doing really well today. Glad to be here. <laughs> How's MJ Pack treating you? It's good. I'm tired already, though. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of hallway conversations, a lot of good brands here, a lot of good companies to talk to. So it's been very very productive, I'd say. I, I like the, the, the spirit of camaraderie right there where you said a lot of other good brands. Yeah. Because isn't there only one brand? Not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, how are you finding it? Oh, it's great. The people are great. The conversations are great. It's really awesome to see the brand showcases. It's really fun to see everyone's new products out there. Really great conference. Yeah, what's interesting is that, you know, I mean, we're all about the brands. The brands should be defining the... The, the American cannabis industry, the global cannabis industry, because you guys care most about what's best for the patients and the consumers. You're right there. Your reputation's on the line. you got to be worried about your product. You're not doing the limited licensing, fighting for market space, supply chain control stuff. You're really working to do what's best for the patients and the consumers. But uh, WANA has been around for a while. 2010. 2010. Where, where, where's one of the origins of Wana? I, I, I honestly don't know, and I'm looking forward to learning. Yeah, yeah. what's the story? Uh, so, founded by our women-owned Nancy Whiteman in 2010. Oh. You want to get a little closer there? Yeah. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah, Nancy Whiteman is our founder, and she started the company in 2010 uh, out of her own home uh, way back. I mean, really, truly an OG cannabis company. Yeah. And uh, had an opportunity to get involved and. In, I think beyond being a cannabis consumer when she was younger, it was a, a new venture for her and she was looking for something new. And the great thing is she's extremely intelligent, extremely smart, very empathetic, just one of the best women leaders. And it's really, it's shown through in the company that she's made and developed and why we're here today. So is she still in charge of the company? Oh she yeah. She is, oh yeah. 12 years later. 12 years later. That's, and she's from? Uh, from New York originally, but what? she's been in Boulder for 20 years, I oh, think. Oh, okay, so the, the brand was developed out of Colorado. Yeah. yeah. 2000, yep. 2010. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to get a time frame on this. And uh, so you guys, uh, and, and you're, sorry, your roles for, for WANA. I'm the VP of Innovation. Um, I started uh, not too long after the company was founded in 2014. So I've been here. I, I started as a sales rep and uh, used to be a sales manager, but been able to evolve into this role of product development and research. That's cool. Yeah. yeah Joe? He, he's great at it too, by the way. Uh, so I've been with WANA for about two and a half years. In fact, my first week at WANA was when they started doing lockdowns for COVID. So I actually started out of my basement and, you know, kind of had to meet my whole team that way and late, get to know the Late company. March 2020. Yeah. Late March wow. 2020. Uh, but, you know, I've been in this industry since about 2012 in different capacities, different companies. And, uh, and I'd always known WANA and Nancy, you know, back to the point of camaraderie. I mean, Nancy and I, knew each other within the first few months of me being in the industry and I just had such respect for her. We just had a, a good relationship. So it was a very natural fit for me to just kind of move right into that role. Imagine. We're happy to have them. Excellent. So and we have some WANA product here today. I, I imagine you guys have so many SKUs and so many different types of products. I don't know the WANA line that well. I'm familiar with your edibles and, and stuff. But uh, let's start with... Uh, well, we can either start with that or what states you guys are in um, and, and your expansion plans and your current. Which would you prefer to talk about first? Let's talk about the products. Let's talk about products. They're cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, to simplify things for someone new to WANA, we have four primary lines of products. We have classic edibles. These are going to be a distillate product, come in indica sativa hybrid, and ratios of CBD, THC, several different levels. That's kind of like our entry-level line. It's what we started with in 2010. Then the next product we developed and formulated was our uh, quick products. So these are fast-acting products uh, that kick in quickly, take effect in 5 to 15 minutes, um, and offer a, a different high, a, more of a smoker's high, a Delta 9 THC instead of 11 hydroxy. So it's not as sedating, not as long-lasting, um, really probably one of my favorite product lines. Um, and then after that, we started working on our Optimals line. So these are products that are designed to really 
deliver on the promise of the plant. And so we say they're going to do something and they deliver on that effect, whether it be for sleep or for fit, or we're working on products for uh, anxiety and relaxation. They're right. all under an Optimals line. And then most recently, we've taken our Quick technology, the, the Wanna Quick line, mm -hmm. and paired it with fresh frozen live rosin extracts. So we have four flavors with four specific terpene profiles uh, of live rosin that are all infused in the fast-acting technology. And uh, those are just available in Colorado right now, but looking to expand into new states. So, and, and moving on to that, and, and you know, that's some great information. Uh, I, have, I had a really important question that I wrote down. Well, we're going to get to that. The real question <laughs> is, why want to? But we'll get to that towards the end. Uh, states you guys are in, because, uh, you know, people out there are like, how can I... Uh, try WANA and other people are like how can I work with WANA are they looking for licensing deals etc so what yeah. states are you guys in now uh, available so so we're in about uh, 15 I think 17 Seven, 17 17 states let's go split the difference we're in 16 plus Canada uh, and Puerto Rico and so you know really it's a presence on the east coast or sorry yeah east coast like Florida Maryland Massachusetts we have the Midwest we have Illinois we have Missouri, we have Michigan, and then you got, you know, the West, we're in obviously Colorado, uh, we're in uh, Nevada, obviously here where we are today, so really kind of spread out throughout the country, because it used to be when people would say, how do we get WANA? Well, you got to come to Colorado and buy some, right? Right. Now, we're pretty much available everywhere, and the great thing about the, the product line that Mike was just describing is that it gives us an opportunity to, to constantly bring new products into the market, because we don't launch a market usually with the entire suite of products. We kind of drip them in over time, so we're constantly innovating and bringing new products to the market, and that's part of the, the strategy we have for our expansion. And, and 17 must be some some kind of record. Are you, is there, does BDSA track that? Are you, you know, guys the brand in the most states? We believe we are. I don't think I've done a count recently, but yes, that that's one of the things we say, biggest footprint of an edibles company. That's plus nine Canadian provinces, so yeah. Yeah. really covers North America. Yeah. Right, and probably- These are only, only gummies, right? Well, we don't like to say only gummies. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and, and, you know, words, Mike, will speak, right. Mike can speak this more passionately than I can, <laughs> but really gummies are a, a delivery system for us. So right. we have to make a great taste in gummies, so don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a great product, but we look at it as a delivery mechanism for cannabinoids, and it happens to be very effective and efficient at that. So we haven't seen the need to, to find another delivery format. Right. Well, I mean, you're doing what you're doing is so great. I mean, yeah. you've got one this concept and you're just going with it, and that's... Yeah, How I feel like go? early on a lot of product development or like new products where, oh, we put it, cannabis in this and we put cannabis in that. And I think what we've focused on is the consumer is going to find the product form they like and really where you want to innovate is on the experience they get from that product. It's not, did I get a brownie or did I get a gummy? It's, did I get something that helped me fall asleep or did I get something that really relaxed me and chilled me out or did I go out and have a good time with my friends? It's, it's the experience that product gets. Positive reinforcement. Yeah, yeah. This is like reminding me of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and you work where they were making the blueberry thing happen <laughs> and stuff. You're Johnny that, Depp over here. You're, you're like the giant Oompa Loompa guy. He is Willy, no, I am a pretty Willy tall Wonka, Loompa. I think. Yeah. He's more Willy Wonka. Yeah, he reminds me Willy Wonka. Yeah. Well, That's well, what well, I'm saying. Isn't Nancy right. kind of Willy Wonka? Is that <laughs> Nancy, well, I'm not sure what the parallel would be yeah, in, yeah, we're in, uh, working in Willy on Wonka. So. <laughs> but you're tall. I want the gummy that turns me into a big blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> so. I haven't made that one yet, I don't think. I have a question in regards to marketing. So how have you, how have you been able to market? Because, uh, as we know, it's really hard to market cannabis. Yeah. It's definitely restricted digitally. And how is it that you guys have been able to be so successful with this limitation? So, I, I, you know, I talk a lot about the brand existing far beyond the packaging or what we do digitally, our digital footprint. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really about the impact we have in communities, uh, how we treat our partners and our customers, education we provide, those and, and our CSR initiatives. Those have been a big part of, of our brand uh, and our growth. So Somebody just made a deal on the gong. So. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we got a will for that. For. Yeah, that's a deal that just went yeah, down. When the deal goes oh. down, the gong gets run. The deal went down. Yeah. Okay, I missed that deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so it's, you know, it's really the entirety of the company that becomes the brand. And on the marketing side, you know, we do focus a lot on the store because to your point, we're limited in some cases in what we can do. And secondly, as a brand, it's really difficult because I don't have the ability to, to track ROI. Everyone thinks digital, oh, you can track everything. Yeah, I can track everything, but I don't know if I served you an ad that you went into a dispensary and bought my product. I still can't tie that out on, on the back end. So. I don't put too much emphasis on that. I do, we, we put more emphasis on the in-store experience and education and our CSR initiatives. Okay. And you know, everybody in America seems to know, I mean, in the, our cannabis industry at least, 
uh, seems to know Juan at this point. Is there a moment where you guys like can reflect upon and think to yourself, wow, it's, it, Juan is really taking off? I mean, I think it was actually really interesting. So in 2014, I think it was, or maybe it was 2015. I mean, this is, you've got Colorado, Oregon, I, I think that's about it. And Nancy was already saying, let's strike a deal in Oregon. Let's start making Juan in Oregon. I don't right. think anyone was thinking, let's do this in more than one state at that point in time. It was just keep the business alive, deal with regulations, deal with the new emerging industry. And Nancy already had a mindset on national. I mean, she was already moving there. We had operations up and running in Oregon before I was familiar with any other brands that were in multiple states. And, and I'd add to that, too, that part of the strategy has always been get to states early. So we went into Arkansas. We went into Missouri early. Mm -hmm. So when we get into these states early, and we can set the bar for what an edible should be it sets us up really well because other companies come in and, and frankly, I mean, obviously I'm a little biased, but you know, they, they really can't meet that bar. So people tend to come back to our product over and over again. And then that just kind of spreads as we launch new states and it kind of begins to tie together. So for me, from a marketing perspective, I would say tipping point was probably shortly after I started just in terms of the number of states that we were ultimately in and how, you know, someone who visited Florida uh, then saw our product when they went back home to Ohio and you know, there was a lot of cross con uh, connectivity between the markets we were in. So, who's in charge of Wana Europe? Is that Mike, Joe, or Dimitri? <laughs> mm, we don't have a person in charge of Wana Europe. Now, the problem with Europe Smart is question. there's, oh, Rita, Rita, Rita. there's <laughs> no there's no edibles regulations in Europe yet. So, so it's we haven't coming. really we've talked about it, and we have some people we've been you know just chatting with. But yeah. until there's the ability to have edibles in, in Europe, right. we got plenty of stuff to worry yeah. about over here. And you guys didn't dabble in CBD one at all, dude? Well, we did. We uh, did you do? We, we did? We did. Yeah. Do currently, not for a whole lot longer, our, our WANA wellness line is our CBD line. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a re CBD is a crazy, cra I mean, THC is a crazy market, too. Yeah. But CBD is really tough, and uh, it's just not really where we want to put our focus right now. But it's a genuine... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, and I was going to say, I think we see CBD evolving more in the way we're product developing with multiple cannabinoids. You know, I, I think we were a little limited with what we could do on that side. We were limited in who wanted to carry us because, again, without FDA regulation on CBD, it, it's a hard sell. Edibles are Edibles are, are tough. Yeah, edibles are not welcome in a lot of stores because the FDA hasn't ruled on that. So, right. so I, I see a lot more development within WANA doing CBD products alongside low doses of THC, low doses of other minor cannabinoids, functional ingredients, really seeing it get life that way as opposed to just as a CBD brand. Mm -hmm. How many people work for WANA? How big is this company? I think last count, we're probably at about 120 right now. That's inspiring. Wow. I just love that. When I started in 2012, it was like 99 guys with licenses in Arizona trying to find money and figure out what to do. And now there's 20,000 employees in the Arizona cannabis industry. And yeah. so from Nancy to 120, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. I, I, launched, uh, I launched Dixie in Arizona. Uh, oh, with Trip and with those trip, guys, yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember that market, you know, early days. It was... <laughs> well, that's where we probably met before. Yeah. You, you probably know my brother from Bloom, Yuri. He was... The, yes, he had, yes, yes, yes. Him and Trip are still buddies. Yep. And he sold his... Well, there was a transfer to, uh, to Ed Vartugian. Yep. In 2015, know, yeah. And Dixie was one of the first innovators and stuff, 2014. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was behind the scenes studying things, learning. <laughs> you know, those are my three years in Cannabis University. Yeah, well, uh, it's good learning. Underneath my brother and all of his crazy friends. <laughs> <laughs> crazy friends. I remember a few of those crazy Including friends. Including Tripp. Tripp, he's a cool guy. Cool, cool and crazy can go hand in hand. <laughs> well, we spent some crazy time last night, actually. Uh, uh, oh, that's right. He's here. Oh, yeah. He's of here. Of course. Yeah. I hope he's doing well. Uh, I wanted to lead into a little bit to quality control and consistency um, and how everyone can know that whatever's of the 17 states they're in, that they're getting a WANA product. I mean, that must be a challenge for you guys, whether you're manufacturing or licensing, doing it yourself. How do you wrestle through that as a brand? I mean, it's like core to the brand because a brand's nothing without the consistency of you know what you're getting. I mean, that's what makes a brand a brand. So it's at the core of everything we do. It's why we've been able to be successful, I would say. Um, and, and that comes down from everything from the ingredient suppliers for food, working out contract manufacturing deals, I'm um, sorry, uh, supply agreement deals with them, and making sure that all of our partners are sourcing those ingredients. Um, I think when it comes to the cannabis experience, we've done a few things. We've set a lot of parameters around what we will and will not accept when it comes to cannabis extracts. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that 
I think we do pretty uniquely is our terpene blends that are reintroduced. One of the things with cannabis is a strain in California is going to be different than Colorado. It's going to be different than Nevada. Right. And when you have distillate, you've stripped most of the terpenes and anything other than THC away. If it's 90% THC, there's not much room for anything else. So we were able to work with... I've always wondered that. Yeah, yeah. So we were able to work with some partners that did a lot of research on cannabis. They basically looked at it through special analytical equipment and come up with, here's the terpenes we see in that. And we worked with another company. So we're working with abstracts for our terpenes and this other company. They're over here with this cool thing, the Mellotron Bud Board. They have people leave consumer reviews about different strains and say, this one made me sleepy and this one made me energized. And they have all the back-end COAs of the terpenes in that and use machine learning algorithm to pair up what effects were paired with what terpenes. And then we can use that to develop our terpene blend, have abstracts manufacture consistently, and all of our partners are getting the same terpene blend. Are, are most of those partners uh, licensed out? Are you guys manufacturing yourselves? We're or? doing that just in Colorado. So that's, that's part of our model and ability to scale and, and grow into so many markets is finding licensing. good partners and licensing the brand there. That's interesting. And just on a side note, one of the goals of Media USA is we want to help empower the brands. We want to make sure you guys have the money so that you guys can sell, uh, shape the market structure into the future to, so, so that it uh, best serves the consumers and patients because we really believe the brands are the ones that care most about the consumers and patients. And Media USA is heading in that direction. Um, well, cool. Juana. Yeah, Where did the nice name come from? Marijuana. Oh, that's Marijuana. It? That's it? That's Marijuana. It. And you'd be surprised how many people don't get that. I, 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 do Everyone says, well, where's Juana come from? Why do you want to? Marijuana. Um, it, it also is uh, sea urchin in Hawaiian. So <laughs> there you go. Sea I urchin. did not know that. <laughs> sea urchin. Well, 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 that's fantastic. Is there anything you want to jump in? Any questions? Um, maybe just like a, like a last message um, for people that are kind of getting into the cannabis space, like new brands out there. Like what advice would you give them on... How, because you guys are so obviously very successful. That's a great question, and, and I think, you know, my my answer to that, and, and Mike may have a different one, is, um, you know, pick a pick a voice and, and be true to that voice. And it may not be, you know, our our voice at Wanda might not be the right voice for another brand, but um, you've got to be in this space in particular. I think you have to be genuine and true to who you are, and and keep a focus on not just the brand but the product, as Mike was saying earlier, right. because. I think a lot of brands, certainly early on, were like really focused on the brand and kind of forgot about the product side of, of it. Course. And um, and that's just not going to fly. I mean, it'll fly for a little while, and cheap mm -hmm. prices will fly for a little while. But people are going to come back to quality. They're going to come back to the thing that they trust and they know really well. And particularly as the market begins to grow, if you don't have a strong enough identity, those new consumers aren't going to really know how to understand your your brand and your product. Always I think got to be a strong product behind the brand. And as far as if someone wants to get involved in the industry, the only thing I tell them is just do it. Just jump right in, get involved. You know, it's like any okay, other Nike. industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, you wanted to, if you wanted to be a pilot, go to pilot school. You've just got to do it. There's no trick to getting involved in the industry. Come to events, meet people, start asking questions, do your own research, mm -hmm. and find what you can bring and what you can offer and, and do it. I mean, it's, it's, it's that easy. There's, nothing, there's no trick to cannabis. It's, it's yeah. coming in and learning it like any other industry and joining us. Some well, you great advice. You guys are great representatives of a great brand, and, and it's been a real pleasure to get to know you more, Joe and Mike. Uh, real quickly, best way for people to reach out to you, LinkedIn, email, Instagram? Um, LinkedIn is good. Uh, email, Instagram, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say, yeah, LinkedIn uh, and email. So, at Joe Hodes is uh, my LinkedIn. At Joe Hodes. How do you spell that? Well, we're going to have that on there. Yeah. Right, Destiny? Yep. We'll okay. have it right on there, right over your face. And Mike Hennessy. Hold out your hand Mike right Hennessy, here. Mike yeah. And so what's that? <laughs> right here. Uh, yeah, we're just going to put it up there. It's all digital enhanced at the end. It's <laughs> yes. like, okay, I'll give you a high Don't five. Don't worry. You know, she might just digitally put on an Oompa Loompa over there. But I'm glad, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the kid that was going to steal the gumball, but, I'm, you know, so I'm glad you shared with us some of those secrets so uh, about how, how Wana works. We'll keep La working on that blueberry. Last thing, <laughs> and you guys are lucky. Eric was going to be here, but you guys were, ended up being the... We're, uh, we're all lucky. Yeah, no, you, yeah. but as, as representatives <laughs> of Wana here today, we're going to give you uh, parting gifts for joining Mita's uh, podcast, Canterbury yes. Tales. Sweet. Thank you so much. These are, these are humble. Yeah, no, you guys got to wear them. They're it's high point silver. dog tags, pure silver. 
<laughs> they have a value, so don't 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 just be giving them away. Awesome. But we really appreciate you guys. We really appreciate want to wear them. They're freedom dog tags. Uh, Glenn Murray, uh, Pam I Murray's. Know you know Glenn. Pam Murray's husband designed them. He passed away last year, and uh, he, he him and I bonded. And he helped me understand that the undercurrent of the entire cannabis movement is freedom. It's choice. And uh, the Freedom Dog Tag represents that. So wear it proudly. And thank you for being on Canterbury Tales. Yeah, this is a lot of having us. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. This is another episode of uh, Canterbury Tales.